Okay, so Goku's next inevitable transformation that he will receive in Dragon Ball cannot be this. And you're probably thinking, well, what's this? But before we get into all that, we kind of got to look at what Dragon Ball has become over the recent years and what Dragon Ball Super has ushered in. And even before that, you kind of got to look at the history of what Dragon Ball transformations have been that led us up to this whole mental notion that, yeah, people are pretty sick of a certain thing. This is for my day one's gotta be clear. Still moving on, baby, but I wish you was here. Still moving on, baby, but I gotta get there. Because as we've seen Dragon Ball throughout the years, one of the main key elements of the transformations and the glow up, so to speak, that the Z Warriors and Dragon Ball characters alike have obtained is usually their transformation, whether it be Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, or even Ultra Instinct, is mainly a changing of the color of the hair, as far as design wise. And that's of course excluding the ever so epic and probably the best looking transformation of the entirety of the series, Super Saiyan 4. Also because it's a part of GT and there's a section of the fandom that don't really feel fond about GT. Although ever since Super's inception, I've kind of seen people come around to it, so there's that. But the Dragon Ball fandom for a long time now has relied on that key element of being the main de facto whenever a character would power up, transform, and ultimately grow. I mean, I guess things would have been different if they would have went the route of what Kaioken started, where it was mainly just like an aura power up, although even his hair would still turn slightly red, so there's that. But Super Saiyan 1, it was blonde. Super Saiyan 2, it was blonde with a little bit of electric sparks. Super Saiyan 3 started to go into a cool direction with the long hair but due to it being a very strenuous job to draw that character design they kind of did away with it except for rare occasions again super saiyan 4 really started to go into an awesome route kind of revamping the entirety of what you would think a transformation for a dragon ball character would have but because dragon ball gt was met with a lot of vitriol and overall disappointed critics alike ultimately it seems as though they had abandoned that route and when it returned many years later for dragon ball Super, or technically the Battle of Gods film, because that was the first canonical piece of Dragon Ball content that came after, you know, many a years. It seemed as though Dragon Ball kind of had felt as though everything that GT stood for needed to be missing from the future of its franchise. From the aesthetics to even going outside of the bubble of going after the story of Dragon Ball Z ended, Dragon Ball Super tried to play it more to what fans like and overall the approach of hit them in the nostalgia. Because anywhere from Super Saiyan God to Super Saiyan Blue to Ultra Instinct and everything in between was for the most part just hair color changes. And maybe I'm using a bit of hyperbole when I say just hair color changes because Super Saiyan God transformation, of course, Goku kind of looked a little bit younger and his body was a lot more slimmed and toned up, opposed to what we've seen with Super Saiyan in the past, giving you brawlic muscles. Then from Super Saiyan God to Super Saiyan Blue, it was kind of just, hey, why don't we turn Goku's hair blue? You know, cell red, cell blue. I think Toriyama even had a quote where he was basically saying, he chose one of the colors over the other because he felt that color was stronger than the other or something along those lines and then moving forward from super saiyan blue again they started to seem like they were trying something different with the initial inklings of what the ultra instinct transformation was looking like because before goku donned the silver haired ultra instinct transformation he had a version of ultra instinct that was not quite perfected yet when it first came out a lot of fans dubbed it the omen form or pre ultra instinct but it was essentially just goku with his normal black hair but you could kind of see that there was was a slight blue tint around him and in general there was something different about him and then of course ultra instinct and ultra instinct mastered which is basically silver haired goku and so despite the fact that dragon ball had a new chance at life after a 20 year hiatus it kind of seemed as though dragon ball didn't really try to reinvent the wheel in fact oftentimes it felt as though it was living on its glory of its heyday and a lot of that again stems from hey why aren't the transformations kind of unique and different one of the things that made dragon ball such a classic and a standout whether it be from its time or or even at this current time was the fact that Dragon Ball was innovative. Even though we did have classics like Saint Seiya and Fist of the North Star, Dragon Ball, once it turned into its Z era, really started to reinvent what you thought of when you thought of Shonen Jump battle manga. When Goku went Super Saiyan for the first time, despite the fact that it was simply just him with blonde hair and blue eyes, it was the tone that Toriyama had set and kind of utilizing hair color transformations as a power up, so to speak, for his characters in his manga. And it was very effective because no other series was doing quite that that scenario we had like in Saint Seiya they would have the golden cloth and things like that but kind of taking it to a more personalized aesthetic and transforming it was something huge and unique that Toriyama was I don't want to say the inventor of but definitely helped to popularize the idea however you fast forward 20 years after the end of Dragon Ball GT and it seems as though the franchise went from being the leader of shonen you know groundbreaking 
to kind of following trends of its past and even taking some bits from other series of the current shonen. I mean, if you look at the transformations that we've had in Dragon Ball thus far, it kind of seems as though we've almost touched every single color you can think of for the transformation. So I'm not sure how much longer they're going to be able to provide and rely on that being the main shtick. I think literally outside of the primary colors, they probably only haven't touched things like green. So I guess there's that, but even pink was touched with Super Saiyan Rose. Like, <laughs> yeah, they touched the entire rainbow. And so there's where I think that Dragon Ball kind of needs to find a new way. Despite the fact that the Dragon Ball Super anime has been over for over five years now, and the manga has continued the story, and there's been about two arcs and some change as of the recording of this, Dragon Ball even now hasn't went back to its ways of being an innovative leader in the shonen genre. And with stuff like Dragon Ball Daima on the way, it kind of makes you question like, can Dragon Ball even survive in this generation? Or is it just going to keep riding the coattails of the past? There's no question that Dragon Ball was one of the pioneers of shonen, and we probably wouldn't have Goliaths like the Naruto's Bleach One Piece of today if it wasn't for Akira Toriyama thinking outside the box. Although let's not kid around as if Dragon Ball started as this, you know, trailblazing battle shonen. It was really a comedy series about a kid trying to find balls. But a common complaint, and probably one of the most prevalent complaints in the Dragon Ball fandom for the longest time, is the fact that it's not being innovative with the transformations and if that's one of the main questions and the main things on fans minds is oh my god what's the power up going to be like when Goku goes to you know a new form and it's basically just another change to the color palette of his hair that's where Dragon Ball has to start diving into a little bit more of the stuff that it's being inspired by the new generation with and mix in with some of that Toriyama charm that we know and love and I don't want to say reinvent the wheel all over again but definitely do something different which despite what I said earlier I guess you would say maybe in one of the more recent arcs, Dragon Ball has tried to do things like giving quirks or kind of superpower-esque type situations with some of the characters, opposed to just, hey, I got big punch, I got big blast. Although, who are we kidding? Most of the time, a Dragon Ball arc will indeed end with some bigger blast than the last. Hey, 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 I'm not a Dragon Ball hater, okay? I've been watching since I was five years old. Come on now. I'm just keeping it real, you dig? And I think, honestly, a lot of those complaints also come from the fact that fans have seen what Dragon Ball is capable of when it does think outside the box. When you have transformations like the Super Saiyan 4 look that we got for Goku, Vegeta, and Gogeta in Dragon Ball GT, it's it's like, why can't we experiment a little bit in that avenue? I think everyone recognizes now, yes, Dragon Ball GT was technically a failed experiment at going on with the story despite Toriyama walking away. But I mean, it's not like in Dragon Ball Super, he's writing the entire thing. He's mainly giving cliff notes and we have Toyotaro to thank for doing most of the manga. So I'm saying all that to say that maybe it's not Super Saiyan Force transformation that Dragon Ball GT failed and it's everything else. And if we seemingly got a formula going that has been working thus far for Dragon Ball Super to still be be continuing on with the manga despite it's already being like my gosh it's been what six seven eight years since dragon ball super manga started jeez i think dragon ball has the potential to, to once again show the newcomers of shonen what that is all about but that's only if they abandon the whole hey let's switch the color of their hair we'll sell a billion dollars worth of toys because unfortunately especially nowadays when the serialized manga is no longer the bread and butter of the franchise yeah dragon ball definitely has to sell merch and probably one of the reasons why they've done so many of these hair color palette swap thingy majigs is that it's easy to make toys and book bags and lunch boxes. And with anime being at its peak in success worldwide, yeah, they probably want to play it as safe to the formula as possible. But I guess only time will tell, considering the fact that we've had weirder transformations that we never thought or weirder news in the Dragon Ball franchise for that matter. Anywhere from Frieza turning black to Broly returning this time into the canon of the story. Heck, we even got female Broly. Shout out to Kale. Dragon Ball has rocked us time again with surprise after surprise and with with us having two technical canonical stories to look forward to with the Dragon Ball Super manga continuing and the emergence of the Dragon Ball Super Dema anime that I believe comes out like October 2024. You can expect our favorite Saiyan warriors to have more transformations to come. Just hopefully it's not something that we've seen a thousand times or just changing the color of their hair. Dragon Ball has the potential if it really wants to to explore concepts, powers, and designs that could be utilized for a generation. It's done it once before. Hopefully Dragon Ball 
Campbell can do it again. Toei Animation, Toyotaro, and everybody involved. Come on, think outside the box. Let's get something more like Super Saiyan 4 and less like, yeah, Ultra Instinct and every other hair color swap. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just being honest. So ultimately, Dragon Ball's next transformation can't be anything that we've seen a thousand times already. Like, if you're just gonna change the color of a character's hair, maybe we can try something different because, I mean, we've touched on pretty much every color. I mean, even Piccolo tapped the orange box with Piccolo Orange. Not to mention the fact that Beast Gohan is also like a whitish, silverish hair color chain similar to Ultra Instinct. It's like Toriyama Toei and them sat around being like, yo, we don't want to do character development or training or anything out of the ordinary like that. Can we just upgrade Gohan because he's sad or mad to his father's status? But hey, that's Dragon Ball. Okay, that was so much of a low blow. I'm sorry. I love Dragon Ball though. Yeah. And if you think about it, Dragon Ball has all the opportunities in the world now to actually try and experiment with different looks for different transformations. It's not like we only have one linear story that's been running for the longest time. We have multiple different platforms it could be told on. There's of course Dragon Ball Super, the kind of most mainstream canonical platform for Dragon Ball. There's Dragon Ball Heroes, which most fans look at as fun fan service and arguably just filler. And then there's the upcoming Dragon Ball Dama anime as well. Granted, of the three of them, I would say that the Dragon Ball Heroes anime more so relies on fan service and less on innovation, so that might not be the likely candidate to do something out the box. I mean, I know they've had some wicked transformations and whatnot, but again, it's all catering back to what you would expect from Dragon Ball. There's Dragon Ball Super, but even them stepping outside the box a little bit is mainly just them trying these like quirkish combinations and less on physical design transformations. Which leads me to one of the joys that could possibly be, and that's Dragon Ball Dama. Considering that this is a small story that takes place in between the end of Z, but before Super, while they can't go all the way crazy with it, ultimately there's a major possibility that they could utilize that time to do some sort of transformation. And hey, even if that transformation can't be carried over, because again, why wouldn't it be used in Dragon Ball Super or any point after the story? Obviously, they would have to explain that. If it's something that only Goku can utilize because he's in that chibi form after being transformed because of the demon or whatever the heck the story is supposed to be. They could use that opportunity to put in a cool transformation even if it's just one brand new one for Goku and yeah. Vegeta. We, you know, Vegeta fans want something too. Boom. Dragon Ball Dama could be the savior franchise we've been waiting for because they don't really have to tie to the rules. All they have to do is make sure that everything is neatly tucked in by the time it ends so that it doesn't collide with Super or any of the other Dragon Ball canon. And even that, it doesn't necessarily have to. If they decide to make Dragon Ball Dama take place within that timeline, but a whole different dimension in and of itself, then yeah. It's not like they haven't done something like that in the past with most of the Dragon Ball Z movies not being able to fit it within the continent continuity of the story. If fans are having such a problem with Dragon Ball Dama opposed to doing everything that the fans don't like and that's just messing with the hair colors or whatnot, maybe they can use this series and showcase some epic transformations that the fans have never thought of. Kind of going back more into that primal apish look that was going on in Super Saiyan 4 or in general with the Uzuru transformation. Use Dragon Ball Dama for some good, darn it. But let me know how you feel about this whole situation. Do you think that Dragon Ball has gotten old and tired with the hair color swaps for the transformation? What are you looking for in Dragon Ball nowadays, especially when it comes to the upgrades? And with 2024 being the year of the dragon, with also Dragon Ball's franchise coming to its 40th anniversary, you can expect that they're going to have a few surprises in store for us regarding some epic and iconic transformations. I mean, you know how they like to be unanimous with time markers, such as in the dragon box of Dragon Ball Z, them marking the fall of the Berlin Wall being matched to what happened in Dragon Ball Z at the time. Toy Animation and the Capsule Corp staff probably are going to give us a bang. Or or another hair color swap, there's that. And your world thoughts and expectations. I'm Tim. Subscribe, hit that bell. I'm out. Maybe I love is a movie. Maybe I love is a movie. Maybe I love is a movie. Never can I have what I'm doing. Maybe I love is a movie.